Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Coming up today on HHS In-Depth, a scholarship in the memory of a beloved teacher we lost last year is available for seniors to apply for. Plus, we'll bring you a recap of this year's Scholastic Arts and Writing Competition, which saw many Homestead students win gold keys. Those stories and more straight ahead. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Thomas Lazar. And I'm Nana DeHook. And Thomas, next week May starts the last month before summer break. It really felt like this year flew by. It definitely did. And last year around this time, the Homestead community lost the French teacher and one of the most positive people in the school, Mr. Senyon. But to keep his legacy and spirit alive, a memorial scholarship was created in his honor. HHS in-depth reporter Carly Flanagan is in now with more details on the I Believe in You scholarship awarded to Homestead seniors. Last year, Homestead lost a beloved teacher, Mr. Sagnon. In his memory, a scholarship was created for seniors that plan to go to a post-secondary school and the application deadline is approaching. There's a scholarship that, that seniors are able to apply for. It's called the I Believe in You Scholarship, and it's a $1,000 scholarship that's in memory of Mr. Sagnon, one of our French teachers who passed away last year. Uh, and the scholarship honors his spirit and honors who he was, a person who, who always put other people in front of himself, uh, someone who believed in doing good just for the sake of doing good. So we've created this scholarship in his memory to offer to seniors. For seniors looking to apply, the rules are simple. So the scholarship is open for seniors, uh, and really there are three components to the scholarship. The first is writing a, uh, an essay of 750 words to talk about a time that you performed an act of kindness for somebody just to do it, not because you were paid to, not because you had to, but you did something to be kind to, to somebody else. We also need two letters of recommendation, a teacher letter of recommendation and a personal letter of recommendation that's not related to school. And then finally, you want to show, you want to provide verification that you've been accepted to a, a post-secondary school. Could be a, a four-year school, could be a two-year school, uh, but just a proof that, of where you're going, going to go next year. So all those three things are due uh, by 2.45 p.m. Friday, May 6th. With earlier this month marking the one-year anniversary of his passing, Homestead will always remember Mr. Sagnon and what he taught us all. He was just such a kind, gentle, caring individual who was full of integrity. You know, to me, integrity is, is the way somebody acts when nobody is looking. And Mr. Sagnon embodied an integrity to me. Uh, he was just somebody that I looked up to a, a quite a bit and was a great friend and, a, and an even better colleague, but just one of the most caring, compassionate, uh, kind, funny, humble individuals that I've met in my life. And, and I'm certainly a better, a better person today because of having known him and certainly miss him, but every time I think of him, it just uh, makes me smile and I think about uh, all the good that he did at Homestead, all the good that he did for all of our students and, you know, 50 years down the road, uh, those of you who were fortunate enough to have him as your teacher will still be talking about him and sharing stories about him with your kids and, and that really shows, uh, you know, how somebody's legacy lives on even long after they're gone. To apply and for more information, check the HHS Scholarships page. Remember, the deadline is next Friday, May 6th. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Carly Flanagan. Thanks, Carly. We're joined now by reporter Michelle Obiama. And Michelle, as we wrap up Just Because Week, one highlight was the return of the Spring Arts Gallery. That's right, Netta. From Monday through Wednesday, Homestead students got the chance to visit the Spring Arts Gallery. The gallery showcased all the amazing art that our Spartan artists have been creating throughout this past year. After having an online Spring Arts Gallery for the past two years, the art department has finally brought back in-person viewing. Art teacher Mrs. Jones says that this year's Spring Arts Gallery was one of their best yet. It feels amazing to hear the excitement of the students and staff viewing the show and discussing their favorite pieces. It has been a springboard for conversations with students about what art class they should take next because they're so excited about the work that they're seeing. It is especially wonderful to see the pride on the faces of the students whose work is on display especially the seniors, who were freshmen the last time they set up the gallery. She ended by saying she is so proud of our department and our students. Thanks, Michelle. Well, the Spring Arts Gallery displayed the work of Gold Key winners from the annual Scholastic Competition. 
This year, like many before, there were a number of Homestead students recognized for their talent in art and writing. I entered painting, and specifically it was oil painting, and I got a gold key. And I wanted to just examine that difference between us and nature and humans and time and nature and time and everything involved with it. I entered a mixed media piece and I won a gold key, a national American Visions nominee, and the Fort Main Museum of Arts Purchase Award. I entered two essays and one photography submission. One of them was a Spotify essay about the impact of Spotify and rising artists. The Spotify essay is the one I got the highest, I got a gold key, and the other two I got honorable mentions on. But the achievements did not come easily, as each student put in work both in and outside of school for their project. I would say a solid 17 hours, <laughs> or something close to that, because it's easy to get trapped in the little details. Our assignment was to create a series, and so I created two pictures, and then I had to cut up each picture into 11 strips, and reattach them in a way that I thought would work. Lots and lots of drafts. I did about five drafts, and I also had a lot of people edit it, a lot of teachers, and then my sister and my few friends look at them too. The work each student put in was worthwhile. When it comes to scholastic awards, it is important to choose a topic you are passionate about and want to express through art or writing, regardless of whether you think your project could win or not. Pick a subject matter that means the most to you. Something that means a lot to you and that you can argue and that you can talk about and enjoy it. Definitely enter. There's nothing to lose here. You enter your work, you know, you never know what could win an award. I entered four pieces, three of them won nothing, and then one of them won a whole mess of stuff. So it's definitely worth entering. If you are interested in submitting your work for next year's competition, you can ask your art or English teachers about it, or stay up to date with the Scholastic website for more information. With the month of April coming to an end and May coming up, I think it's safe to say we are leaving our winter temperatures behind, as the heat has been rising. Will this warm wave continue into summer? I will let you know in a few. Attention seniors, the time has come to submit your pictures for the slideshow that plays annually at graduation. Send in any pictures that showcase fun memories that you have from elementary to high school. If you would like to see your photos in the graduation slideshow, check your email to access the Google Sheet link where you can put as many photos as you'd like. Make sure to have all your photos in by the May 20th deadline as there will be no extensions. Welcome back to HHS In-Depth. Homestead had 19 math students compete in the Regional Indiana Council of Teachers of Mathematics Math Contest Saturday morning at Purdue Fort Wayne. Congratulations to the following students for their placements. In Geometry, first place, Ashi Jane, and second place, Isabel Ambrose. In Algebra 2, first place, Macy Wilson, and second place, Sebastian Rodriguez. In Comprehensive, which is pre-calc and higher, first place, Nathan Hauser, second place, Daniel Schwab, and third place, Leah Stoop and top 5% state performers in each exam category are recognized at the ICTM Outstanding Scholars Award Ceremony at the Indiana State House in June. They can also go on to compete at the national level. Italy travelers, you're only two and a half months away from departure. Please plan on attending a mandatory meeting on Tuesday, May 24th at 6 p.m. in the community room. You need to bring your packets of information that you received in February. Also, you must bring a copy of your code vaccination card to hand in. There will be new information to share with you that night as well. Girls soccer players, if you are interested in participating on the Homestead girls soccer team this coming fall, please join them for the senior-led training this summer, which starts in early June. You can email or call Coach Link at the information shown here to sign up. You can also pick up the information in the athletic office. They are looking forward to getting started. And now here's a rundown of clubs meeting at Homestead over the next week. The French club will meet today after school in Madame Martin's room, room 607. Go join them as they will be playing bingo and there will be food. Are you interested in current events? Do you enjoy discussing politics? Go to Young Progressives today from 2.45 to 3.30 in room 614, Miss Smith's room. All political viewpoints are welcome and snacks will be provided. And Euchre Club meets today after school in room 212. Players of all experience levels are welcome. This is one of the last two meetings of the year. Take a friend, they hope to see you there. As the school year comes to an end, some students might have difficulty keeping up with their schoolwork. 
HHS in-depth reporter Luke Geyer is in now to provide you with some helpful tips to stay on task. After spring break, many students become apathetic towards their work, which can affect their grades during this last part of the semester. However, you can avoid becoming apathetic by following these simple suggestions. Number one, set goals. Before you lose your motivation, it's important to set some simple, short-term goals and long-term goals to follow. It can help you keep your motivation and prevent you from stressing yourself out because of unrealistic expectations. Number two, reward yourself. Alongside setting goals, you should make sure to reward yourself after accomplishing some of your goals. You've worked hard to achieve them, and it's okay to give yourself something that you can enjoy and be appreciative of. Number three, take a break. While it's okay to set goals and achieve what you can, if you are stressed to the max, it's okay to take a break. Your mental health is important, so you should take a break to recuperate and to stay motivated for the remainder of the semester. Number four, update your study location. If you're having trouble working on your homework, then maybe it's time to change where you study. Your study location is central to being able to keep up to date with school and not distract yourself from keeping your grades up during these last few weeks. Number five, take it one day at a time. You don't necessarily have to aim for an A plus in every single class. You should just do your best and take it one day at a time. If you're having a hard time holding it all together during this final stretch of the school year, then hopefully these tips will help you stay strong and have an enjoyable rest of the semester. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Luke Geyer. Thanks, Luke. Well, this week's weather was nothing like what we saw last weekend. So what can we expect heading into this weekend? Jacob Bashford joins us now to let us know. Thank you, Nada and Thomas. For today, it will remain partly cloudy throughout the rest of the day, with a high of 61 and an overnight low of 43. If you have any outdoor plans, tonight will be a good night to do so as long as you have some sort of jacket. Looking into the weekend now, the temperature is continuing to rise back up, and it won't be quite the heat wave we saw last weekend, but you should be able to take off your coats. On Saturday, we have a few small showers scattered throughout the day, as we will reach a high of 66 and a low of 53. On Sunday, we break into the 70s once again, but scattered thunderstorms plague the day, so make sure you don't get caught outside in those. With all the rain we are getting over the weekend, leaving your car outside might be a good idea to get a natural car wash. That being said, can we expect the temperatures to stay rather warm through next week? I'll be back soon with that answer and next week's outlook. All right, thank you, Jacob. Next in sports, we'll get you caught up on Homestead Athletics over the past week. Graham DeWitt is in next in the Locker Report. Stay with us. Next week on HHS In-Depth, reporter Joel McChesney will give you an update on the school's construction and what there is to expect for next school year. Welcome back to The Locker Report. I'm Graham DeWitt. Every spring sports team is well into their season at this point of the year, with all of them being in action this past week and weekend, starting with the baseball team who swept Hamilton Southeastern in their doubleheader last Saturday. Homestead won their first game 10-3, led by Isaac McDonald and Bryce Yoder, who both went 3-4 for four at bat. McDonald also had four RBIs. In the second game, the Royals got out to an early 2-1 lead against Homestead after the first two innings. But the Spartans responded with nine runs in the third inning, and they were able to keep their lead for the remainder of the game. Caden Tarango had eight strikeouts and was named the winning pitcher, leading the Spartans to a 13-11 victory. The Spartans were also in action on Wednesday against DeKalb, winning easily with a 12-2 victory. The team will play another doubleheader tomorrow at home against Northrop. Last Thursday, the softball team beat Concordia 10-3. Ava Mejia pitched 15 strikeouts, falling just one shy of tying the school record. Then on Monday, the team beat Bishop Dwanger 7-5. Megan Rosenbaum was credited with the win. And the team lost a close match on Tuesday against Columbia City 3-2 in extra innings. The team had a total of seven hits in that game. They will play a doubleheader tomorrow against Delta. The golf team also played last Saturday and took 11th place at Sandy Pines. Ryan Parker led the Spartans with 76, and Cade Cobbler, Noah Lance, and Jack Berta all scored under 90, swinging at 81, 87, and 89 respectively. 
And last Tuesday, the boys took care of business against Canterbury, making a statement by winning 153 to 201. Cade Cobbler led the team with 36, followed closely by Ryan Parker with 37 and Jack Berta with 38. They will compete tomorrow at Rock Hollow. And on Thursday, the girls' tennis team beat Bishop Lewers 5-1. Everyone on the team that competed that day won all of their sets. Then on Saturday, they placed fifth at the Carmel Invite. Ellie Cook placed third as a single, and Lydia Stout and Grace Hansen placed third as doubles. The team also beat Concordia 4-1 on Tuesday. The girls' next match will be here at the Homestead Invitational tomorrow. And just another reminder to all Homestead coaches, if you want the results for your team to be aired on HHS In Depth, make sure to reach out to Mr. Shankle or Anthony Gary with the results at the email addresses shown below. For The Locker Report, I'm Graham DeWitt. Have a great weekend and stay tuned as weatherman Jacob Bashford will have a final check of the forecast when we return. Next week shows a little bit of everything weather-wise. Fortunately, there aren't any lows that dip quite as low as this past week. Monday, the rain should stop for the day and will be partly cloudy with a high of 72 and a low of 52. Sadly, the rain returns Tuesday and Wednesday, with Tuesday having morning showers and Wednesday there are scattered thunderstorms throughout the day. After those storms pass, we shouldn't have any rain for a while as Thursday kicks off about a week without rain. It looks like we are moving away from winter and spring temperatures and into temperatures that are thankfully more summer-like. Nada, Thomas, back to you. All right, thank you, Jacob, and thank you for watching today. Good luck to all our homes at athletes and other performers in action this weekend. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you back here next week.